<clears throat> just to give you a visual of education here. So El Paso Man Physical Therapy is on the far left. Um, the blue is a bachelor's degree, yellow is a doctorate, orange is residency, red is fellowship. Yeah, I've been to school that long, it's a long time. Most PTs here in town actually just have master's level training with, you see the green right there, six years. And then most chiropractors have eight years of training. So this pathway on the right here, I'm just gonna tell you a story of a typical patient going through a traditional physical therapy clinic, outpatient clinic. I'll start by talking about the current state of PT. Clinics will usually see three to five patients at a time. The treatments are usually performed by physical therapy assistants, in some cases, technicians as well. And it's common for these patients to show up three times a week for up to eight weeks, sometimes longer. Um, it turns out they'd go for about 24 visits total if they're going for two months. It's kind of a lot of therapy. So I'll, when I was working in this environment, I would usually ask the patients, tell me about your back pain, for instance. And I get a response like this. I went to therapy for two months. Uh, for my back pain and I got a little bit better. It's been six months since that, now my pain is about the same. Um, the surgeon says that I could use surgery, but I really don't want that. And I'll go on to ask the patient, well, who did you see during your last bout of therapy? And they'll say something like this. I saw the PT for the first visit, then I saw the assistants for about three weeks, and then I saw the PT again. So they only really saw the PT for a, a couple of visits throughout the course of a month. Now, let me talk about PTA training a little bit. Um, they're associates level, uh, licensed individuals. And just to use an analogy, um, how many of y'all have cars and have had, ever had to get an oil change? Pretty much everybody, right? So when you get an oil change, this is the equipment you'd need. It's not really that much. A lot of people do it in their garage. I mean, it looks like that's someone's garage right there. I take my car to Jiffy Lube and usually a you know, 18, 19 year old kid does it in 30 minutes or, or less if it's not too busy. No big deal for someone like that, right? Well, let's say their check engine light comes on and then you hear a thump coming from under the hood somewhere. Something serious is probably going on. Um, let's say you take that car to the dealer and have the mechanic look at it and they say, hey, your transmission is not working too well. We're gonna send you over to the transmission specialist. That transmission specialist has gotta have this picture of a transmission in their head so they can know how all these parts fit together and what needs to be replaced or fixed. Um, same analogy for a physical therapist assistant versus a physical therapist. So going back to the story, then patient goes a little further along in PT in a traditional environment, and then they say this, my pain has not gotten better, so I'm scheduled for surgery next month. This will leave me so frustrated. I looked like this at the end of every day seeing all these patients because I just knew that I could do better. And if I had the time to be able to work with them, they could probably prevent having a surgery or some serious injury. And I just always felt like I was falling short in this environment. So I had to create a new way to do physical therapy. It's actually not new, it's happening all over the country. Um, uh, practices are emerging, um, but let me just go into it a little bit. So that's the current state, again, all those patients, assistants, many visits. I wanna shake that up, just make it completely different. <laughs> I wanna position my company as a place of education where we can catalyze the physical therapy world here to improve. Um, the number one thing that I want to start to do is decrease the amount of visits done. I think we really overdo it on how many visits need to be done for each patient. Um, this is going to be a cost and time effective solution for most patients. Um, and then the other big thing that I like to do is educate. I love teaching. Um, so I want to help PTs here in town that want to pursue fellowship training by being a mentor. So once I'm done with my fellowship training, I'll be able to help them out with that. I've also started to teach at UTEP so that I can introduce these ideas and concepts to the PT students coming through the, the physical therapy program. I love this quote. This is the one that jo Joseph read, only the mediocre are always at their best. Just to expound on it a little bit, you know, once you feel like you're kind of settling in and, and you're getting good at what you do, that's time to say, hey, I'm probably being mediocre. There's gotta be something I could do better. Um, so that's something that always drives me. Another quote that I really loved and made me start my company is, you must be the change you wanna see in the world by Mahatma Gandhi. Um, I want to change physical therapy here in town. It's a, it's a tall task, um, but I think that it's going to be fun and, and worthwhile. And I need your help to do this. So by you guys um, experiencing me and seeing what I, what I can do and other therapists that I have coming along the way uh, working through this company, um, I think that you guys will help us keep in business and also um, educate more therapists. Um, so your referrals are greatly appreciated for that. Something that's always going to be expected out of our company, one-on-one -on -one visits with all our patients. 
by a doctorate level trained therapist. That's nearly unheard of in town. And then the visits are based on your pain. So if you're not in pain, no need to see you. The way we do this is by education. We teach our patients what is the root problem that is causing your pain. Then we show them some exercises that they need to be doing, and they do that on their own. I don't need to be there to stand around and watch and count reps or anything like that. And then I use the manual therapy techniques to speed up that process and make it happen a little bit quicker. Some caveats. So you need a prescription to start physical therapy in Texas. Any of those people that are listed, and I left flyers all over the tables so you guys can, can have them there with you. It has the, some charts on it. Um, any of those people can write your prescription. Um, I can't see anyone 65 and up. And Oops, sorry. And then I'm not in network with any insurances. But that doesn't mean that you can't use your insurance. You actually can. I provide all my clients with a special receipt that they can submit to their insurance companies. Depending on your insurance plan, you can submit that to your um, insurance and have it added to your deductible or even have it um, reimbursed if you've already met your deductible. And of course, we take flexible spending accounts and health savings accounts. Here's the kicker. So on the right here, can't really see the words, but it's on your flyers. If you went to a typical physical therapy clinic and had a $50 copay, which is moderate nowadays with the new healthcare laws, it's actually more than that on average. Um, you're going to end up spending $600 out of pocket for 12 visits with a pass amount of physical therapy, it's going to be $360 for a month of therapy. And I come to your house, and it's a doctorate-trained physical therapist, one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a, it's a no-brainer. It's 40% less. So, Margaret, can I borrow you real quick? I just want to show you guys some quick techniques on uh, uh, manual therapy techniques about what I do so you can see it. Yes, please. Um, it does look kind of like chiropractic. Yep, yeah, right there. It's fine. You can just lie down on your back. So I'm going to show you a neck manipulation. Can you take off your, your glasses? And I've, Margaret's a patient of mine, so I've already screened her out, and I know what's going on with Margaret, so all this stuff is safe for her. So just relax your head here. And I would have assessed and checked everything out first and find a stuck joint, and then I can pop it right there. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap arms across your chest here. I just let that go. And I like to do this technique depending on what's going on. I, I always pick a special technique for the situation. Breathe in and breathe out. Okay. And then can you turn on your side face of me, Margaret? I'm going to move your stuff right over here. And then let's have you move this leg up. Move that leg down. Good. Let me just twist you up a little bit here. Just like that. And I ideally have a pillow under your head. Hold on to your arms like this. Like this? Just like that. Mm -hmm. like so for low back joints that need to pop or move better, I can do techniques like this. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Cool. So I'm um, open to doing any one-on-ones. Thank you. And uh, if anyone has any questions, please see me after the presentation. You can always shoot me an email or give me a phone call. Thank you. I'm Dr. David Midoff with the Pass My Own Physical Therapy.